This was made to maximize the enjoyment of opening each page. Whoa! Look at that. Wow! Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then? Ready? <laughs> That's Mishima, Taranori Yoko's painting of Yukio Mishima. Wow, that's very bold. Check out the red. Chest hair and yellow nipples. Amazing, isn't it? Wow. Mishima was so bound up by so many different things. And Mishima's works are still widely read today. This collection gives us a really clear idea of his aesthetics and what his novels were generated from. What Japanese designers of this era achieved was turning the moment you encounter a book into a type of ritual. First there's the box from which you must remove the book. That's the first step. There are so many different types and some you can't even work out how to remove the book. So there are gimmicks like that. You might struggle to turn the pages of a large book or peer at the pages of a tiny one. The act of reading becomes ritualized. The designs are so fantastical that they influenced photo books around the world. I see. Japanese book design that's totally focused on visual images. Why not give a truly Japanese book to family or friends living in another country? Each of our presenters begins searching for a perfectly Japanese book. Can I go first? That looks colorful. This is also by Tadanori Yoko, a collection of record sleeves. Wow, interesting. He gave it an ambitious title, too, given it's about records. Epic, isn't it? The creation of heaven and earth. What's fascinating is all these band names from the 60s onwards. Yoko must have loved this music and been influenced by it. That's what led to his own later aesthetic. It's like a glimpse at his origins as an artist. Very cool. What do you think? Perfect.